Welcome to the VATSIM UK London Gatwick departure briefing for Crossle Pond Westbound 2022. This video briefing aims to highlight some of the key details for your departure from Gatwick and should be used alongside the CTP London Gatwick Pilots Guide. We will also be providing important updates throughout the event in the Pilot NOTAMS channel on the VATSIM UK Discord. In this departure briefing, we will review some of the threats a pilot can anticipate departing Gatwick. We will cover obtaining clearance and UK flow control, ground operations and standard instrument departures. Obtaining clearance and UK flow control. Clearance is obtained from Gatwick delivery on 121.950 and can be requested by voice RT or by data link. When requesting a clearance by voice, you should report the following information to the controller. Your aircraft type, your stand number, the ATIS letter code you have received and the current Q&H. If you don't report any of this information, then expect the controller to ask for it. Clearance is in the standard European format, destination, SID, Squawk. For example, Speedbird 60 Tango cleared to Atlanta, not from a 1x ray departure, Squawk 3413. The controller will not state the runway or initial altitude in the clearance. This is because each SID is runway specific and there is an initial level defined in the SID. Please check the chart for the level and if you've got any doubts, ask the controller to confirm it. Do not climb above the SID level until you've been given an explicit clearance from London Control. Data link clearance can be requested using the Hoppy's ACARS network. Many add-on aircraft now include CPDLC functionality, but if yours doesn't, you can still use the easy CPDLC program. If you've obtained clearance by Datalink, you still need to report ready to Gatwick delivery on 121.950. You should still report the ATIS and the Q&H. For example, Gatwick delivery, Speedbird 60 Tango with PDC, Information Bravo, Q&H 1025. Once you've got a clearance and you're ready for pushback, you should report ready to Gatwick delivery. An important note, your allocated slot is a takeoff time and you must be ready to push at least 20 minutes before this time to allow time for pushback, taxi and any outbound delay. During CTP, all aircraft pushbacks will be sequenced by Gatwick Planner on 134.225. Delivery will instruct you to contact Planner when you report ready. Planner is responsible for regulating flow across the aerodrome and will inform you of your provisional start time. In Europe, we try to absorb delays on stand instead of queuing on a taxiway. This saves virtual fuel. If there's an ATC delay, don't worry. As long as you're ready to push 20 minutes before your slot, then you'll be allowed to depart as soon as possible. But this might be after your slot if the airport is busy. Event traffic is being prioritised. However, pilots do need to be ready to meet the slot because if you miss it by not being ready, then subsequent flights will be delayed. Planner will be busy, but will keep you updated. Please don't repeatedly ask for updates if you've been given a provisional start time and wait until five minutes after any provisional start time has elapsed before asking for an update. When it's your turn to push, you'll be transferred to Gatwick ground on 121.08. Please do not contact ground until you've been instructed to by Planner. If you hear traffic that reported ready after you being transferred to ground before you, this is deliberate. We're trying to balance flow across the different departure routes and you haven't been forgotten about. Ground operations. Gatwick ground will give you pushback clearance and for certain stands this might include a direction to face after pushback. This is the direction the aircraft knows should be pointing at the end of the pushback. For example, Speedbird 60 Tango, stand 53, push and start approved, face west. Means that once you've finished pushing back the aircraft, the nose should be pointing west. There are two key points to taxiing at Gatwick. First, the northern runway 08 left 26 right is used as a taxiway during normal operations. If your taxi clearance includes the northern runway, for example, Speedbird 60 Tango, taxi to holding point Juliet 7 for runway 08 right via Lima, Romeo, Juliet, Tango, and runway 08 left 26 right, then you do not need additional clearance to enter the northern runway. Treat it like a taxiway. Second, to assist the tower controller with sequencing departures, outbound traffic is held at intermediate holding points. For runway 08 right, these are Juliet 4 and Juliet 7. For runway 26 left, they are Alpha 2 and Alpha 3. 
do not taxi past the intermediate holding point until the tower controller has told you to. You might not be the next aircraft to depart, and if you taxi to Juliet 1 or Alpha 1 without a clearance, you can block the next aircraft. This prevents the controller from departing aircraft in the most efficient sequence, increasing delays, and you won't take off any sooner. If you're following traffic with a two minute departure interval, the controller could have got another aircraft on a different route out in the gap, but you're still going to have to wait the full two minutes regardless. Standard instrument departures. For Cross the Pond, you will route via one of three routes, to the southwest via Southampton, Sierra Alpha Mike, to the west via Kennet, or to the north via Lambourne, Lima Alpha Mike. It is important that you flight plan via your provider route, and if you don't normally update your simulator nav data, this would be a good time to do it so that you have the most up-to-date SIDS. Traffic routing via Southampton or Kennet, you will be cleared via either the Inver 1 Zulu departure for runway 08 right, or the Novma 1 X-ray departure for runway 26 left. For traffic routing via Lambourne, it'll be either the Lambourne 1 Zulu for runway 08 right, or the Lambourne 6 Mike for runway 26 left. We'll run through each route in detail, and a number of the SIDs have stepped climbs and speed restrictions, which we will highlight. A key point, in the UK, any clearance to climb or descend is an instruction to do so immediately, ignoring any level restrictions on the SID or the STAR unless the controller explicitly restates the restriction. For clarity, controllers will include the word NOW for the first climb instruction given to departing aircraft. But if a controller forgets, you're still expected to climb straight to a new cleared level immediately. Southampton departures. Runway 26 left departures will fly the Novma 1 X-ray SID. For this departure, you will climb straight ahead, followed by a left turn towards Novma. The initial climb is to 4,000 feet, and you can accelerate straight up to 250 knots. From Novma, you'll follow the Lima 620 airway to Southampton. For runway 08 right, things are a bit more complex. You'll fly the Inver 1 Zulu SID. This has an initial climb straight ahead, followed by a left-hand turn at 4.7 nautical miles. The initial climb is only to 3,000 feet, and there is a speed restriction of 220 knots in the turn to ensure track keeping. If you go too fast, you'll conflict with Heathrow traffic. It's important to check that your FMC has the climb to 4.7 nautical miles included so that you don't turn too early or too late. There's a step climb at Kilo Kilo Whiskey One Niner. If you haven't yet received further climb instructions, you should climb to 4,000 feet. From Inver, you'll follow the November 6-3 airway to Southampton. Kennet departures will follow the Novma 1 X-ray and the Inver 1 Zulu SIDS as previously discussed. All the same restrictions apply. The routes after Novma and Inver are a little more complex. From Novma, you'll route Lima 620 to Nibda, then turn right to follow the November 1-4 airway to Kennet. And from Inver, you'll route November 63 to Vuga, followed by a right turn to route November 14 to Kennet. Lambourne departures. Departing runway 26 left, you'll fly the Lambourne 6 Mike SID. The SID initially climbs straight ahead for 2.3 nautical miles, then turns right to track inbound to Detling, Delta Echo Tango. Make sure your FMC starts the turn at 2.3 nautical miles. An early or a late turn will erode departure separation. This initial turn is limited to a maximum speed of 220 knots, otherwise you'll overshoot north and conflict with Heathrow traffic. The initial climb is to 4,000 feet, and it's important you don't bust this level, otherwise you'll conflict with Heathrow traffic. Once you're established inbound to Detling, and have passed Detling 29 DME, you can accelerate to 250 knots, and if you haven't yet been given further climb instructions, you should step climb to 5,000 feet. Departing runway 08 right on the Lambourne 1 Zulu, things are simpler. The SID climbs straight ahead to 3.5 nautical miles, then turns left to intercept the inbound track to Detling. You can climb straight to 5,000 feet and accelerate to 250 knots. Both SIDs then involve a left turn towards Lambourne and a further step climb to 6,000 feet. However, before this, you can expect to be radar vectored by London Control onto a heading to position you to the west of Lambourne. You'll also be given climb to flight level 130. 
it's important you reach this level promptly. Controllers need you to be level at flight level 130 by the sector boundary to deconflict against London Heathrow inbounds. It's also common for traffic to stay on the radar heading for some time. Don't ask London to rejoin your route. They'll clear you when the time is right. So hopefully now you're on your way across the Atlantic. At Sim.net have produced an additional video guide detailing European, Oceanic and North American procedures. Make sure to check it out. We hope you have an enjoyable cross the pond and don't forget to check the VATSIM UK Pilot Notams channel for the latest updates. Thanks for watching.